Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and it's time for me to return to where I first met Ori Toy's Acid Rain line. The stronghold I first looked at was in the marine color scheme, and now, here it is in the sand color scheme. That's not all that we're going to talk about, though, as Ori Toy decided to run a little upgrade on this machine once it came out on the mass production level. The Stronghold's a big box of a tank with quad top-mounted machine guns and a quartet of heavy artillery cannons, two to either side. The design remains as boxy, plump, and bulldozing as it did when I first handled it back in 2013, and now it's traded its green and beige colors for... beige! Along with some dark gray and a hint of baby blue. The upshot of this is that you've got a color-matched troop builder ready to populate a display or just crawl all over the thing in the Agert's Infantry release. The other upshot is that, I don't know, maybe you prefer desert colors to marine colors. It's still a very intensely weathered layering of paint applications that throws a gauntlet right down on the doorstep of 3A with textures and spatterings and flecks aplenty. The artillery cannons still open and they still have big ass shells inside. The top mounted machine guns still swivel up and down. The cockpit still opens up in two places and still has some ineffectual light up panels inside. You still turn this on by opening up the back and flipping a switch after installing a pair of LR-44s, and hey, who put all this propaganda in here? I already have three Agerts troopers, I don't need to recruit more. Oh, so now that I have two strongholds, check it out. I'm gonna link them. They're linking. They're linked. Well, I thought it was exciting. Anyway, the stronghold still transforms, all clickety satisfactory to look like a fat, jolly mech suit with artillery for hands and guns for ears. I've gone over the conversion process and the posability in the video I put up just over two years ago, so I'll keep things simple and just say that there's a lot of clicky solidity to just about everything the stronghold does when it gets its joints moving, or its tabs unlocking. But you see those rubber treads? That's where everything changed. Oritoy went out of their way to ensure that anybody with a stronghold also got an in-character envelope full of hard plastic tread links. If you buy a stronghold now, it should include the envelope. If you bought one before all this went down, Oritoy quite loudly offered to send you a pack of tread links in exchange for a photo of you and your stronghold. At least they did last year, I'm not sure if that's still going on. But do you feel it, ladies and gentlemen? Do you sense the incoming stealth V-Build? So Ori Toy kind of went all out. They they created like a custom envelope to send in the mail that I'm not going to show you because my address is on it. They made like custom like in-universe instructions for all this stuff. And uh, yeah, we're going to replace some treads. Now, uh, the whole thing about this tread replacement dealy is you need some tools. You need a knife, you need a screwdriver. Uh, step one on here says to cut the original tank tread carefully. So, I'm gonna try to be careful whilst I cut it. Uh, we'll just cut this one, I guess. Uh, let's see. How shall we cut it? Where shall we make the incision? Uh, I'd say somewhere roundabouts here. And this stuff is just rubber, so this X-Acto should slice through it fairly easily. He says, with the naivety of a noob. One thing you want to do is keep your thumb out of the way of the blade. You'd be surprised how bad I am at doing that. And I don't want this thing to turn into something that's violent and unsuitable for younger audiences. So, let's just cut this one here first. That's, that's simple. That's something, a milestone we can achieve. There we go. Okay. So the cutting's done, I am going to cap my knife immediately. And I guess we just gotta peel this off of here now. Does it just run through the top, or...? Ooh, I see little wheels moving up there. This is the thing that kind of amazes me. So, the engineering for all this stuff to move and, and actually be a working tread is in there. Just that this tread is, is not, you know, conducive to that. So, it's easy to look at this and start conspiracy theorying and going like, I bet those guys had planned all along to have you know, some kind of upgrade for this. Uh, what's step number two? Loosen these two screws a bit. So, there's a, you know, there's a conspiracy theory outlook one can take on this. The place where that kind of falls apart is that 
Not only were these tread upgrades included for free with all of the strongholds that are for sale over at Big Bad, but anyone who took a picture of themselves with rubber treads uh, <laughs> got sent a copy of these uh, upgrades as well. So Ori Toy have quite literally made no money, as far as I can tell, on the whole venture of tread upgrades. So there's something admirable to that. Also, I don't know if I'm doing this right. I think I am. I guess just so this is freewheeling. Come on. I'm not, I'm not stripping it, that's for sure. Um, hmm. Maybe I'll try a different screwdriver. I don't know if this one will fit inside. Got its fangs in there. Yeah, this one's all happy and moving. This one is... Right, this is happy and moving and not broken, is it? No, it's not broken. Okay. This one is not playing ball. Okay, you're supposed to rotate and smoothen the gears. That's happening up there, but... It's not happening down here yet. This isn't paint stuck at all, is it? Oh, there we go. I think it was a little paint stuck. Alright, so that's rotating. The next step is... Ah, snap 40 units together. So, in the envelope you get two little bags. Two little bags full of uh, track components that look like this. And uh, if you want to snap a few together, pretty simple. They just click like that. And as you snap them together, they form like a little length of, you know, flexible tread. So uh, we're going to sit here and watch me do this 40 times in a row, or we would, except I came prepared. So uh, I've got this whole flexible length of track all ready to go. It's kind of cool actually how it can bend like this due to the slight bit of give and the clip connections. So what I'm supposed to do is, according to the instructions, slide across the inner side of the gears. So I believe that is over here. Alright, so slide these over the top. And then... Okay, feed it down through the bottom. Oh, this is tricky. <laughs> so I can get it slid over the top. Like, feeding it through, eventually I hit a bit of a wall in here. Oh, there we go. Just have to mess with some gravity. There's a lot of greeble and framing inside it, inside of here. And, uh, because there's, there are two sections because of how this transforms. So maybe... Ah, here we go. I cracked it open so I can get my hand in there. And get the tread fed the wet... Get the tread fed the rest of the way through. Zoom out a little. Yeah! So now we got real operation going on here. So I want to keep this lined up with as much stuff as possible. And then... There we go. Just clip it together. So you see, the teeth here are, uh, are biting quite happily into the grooves in the sides of these tread bits. Whoa, calm down. Biting quite happily into the grooves here. So, uh, I think if we can get this connected together. Oh, this is tight. I could see someone snapping something if they aren't doing this carefully. Must be why there are extras. But there we go. So now I've got that tread all connected up. A little bit. Ah! Okay. It's a little bit tough still. Uh, one second. Eureka! Okay. So, this thing is now rolling, rolling, rolling. Uh, you don't want to yank on it too hard while you're doing this, because it's... If you, if you yank on it with the wrong pressure, you will just disengage a piece of the tread work and, and have to do all, that threading all over again. But, you know, kind of like that. 
But for the record, uh, here's the difference between the two different looks of tread. Uh, this definitely looks better. It's uh, the rolling thing, the functioning gear is kind of like a, I think just a bit of an Easter egg. It's not really something you need to rely on. Like you're, if you're gonna roll this thing around, it's probably just gonna slide more than this stuff will actually roll. But that's pretty freaking cool, uh, especially given that this was pretty much passed out to customers who picked up the stronghold uh, free of charge. Those tread parts ain't perfect, but I love the gumption on Ori Toy's part to just get those parts out to everybody because damn it, they wanted to. And the option remains to keep the rubber treads in place instead if you prefer the cleaner look. As for the Stronghold upside down apostrophe 88 sand version, I'm not as into its color scheme as I was the marine version, but at this point I am quite happy to have halfways doubled up on the vehicle. A load of sand colored stuff came out in the opening waves of acid rain, and I'd feel remiss to not have a matching Stronghold lined up alongside the Soul Commanders, Agert's Infantry, and Speeder Mark II. The base toy itself is still a badass lump of transforming mecha regardless of its paint. Both Strongholds feel more or less identical. If you only want one, I don't know, just follow the colorway preferences of your heart, man. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and Acid Rain let the Stronghold remain its biggest and bulkiest release for some time. The next two vehicular entries in the line got a bit slimmer and a lot speedier.